What's up guys? Carlos, Eco Fishing Shop. Today is the day. We are on the road and we are about to install the Garmin 93SV UHD on the Old Town Autopilot 136. There we go. That's a quick preview of it. Let me get everything together and we will uh, start this video. Let's go. All right guys, so we got everything out that we need. Um, we're gonna be using this transducer mount. I'm gonna drop a link to this in the description below, but it's super simple. It just goes on there. Actually, it goes on there the, this way. And then you just uh, put your supplied hardware in and then put it on your on the kayak. You have a power wire, mounting bolts. You're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, a pair of wire crimpers, and some butt splices. So let me get all this stuff rigged together and then we'll get back with you. We have our transducer mount bolted on to our transducer. And now it is time to get it mounted to the kayak. So let me get all this wiring fed up through the hole. I've got magic hands right now. Then once we get all the wiring ran up through, once again, I'm gonna drop a link to this mount in the description because I think this thing is just super simple. It replaces the factory mount, and I mean, it's pretty self um, understandable. You just snap it on, put the bolts in, and then, we mount it. Let's see how we go here. Kind of got to push our wire down a little bit. And what I like about it is it uh it it puts the transducer up super high on the boat, and I like that. So, um, one. Put in one more. And all of this is done being being done on the road. So you don't need a shop or you know things like that to be able to get these things done. All you need is bare minimal tools, nothing fancy. All we have is a pair of wire strippers and a Phillips screwdriver. And that is practically all you're gonna need. Sorry about the background noise here. We got cars driving by. Um, just wanna make sure that all this is tight. And then we will kind of give you a idea. All right, well the camera just fell. That's a blooper for you guys, but anyways, so here's how it looks. I mean, it sits with that mount. I mean, it's way above the bottom of your keel here. So that is what I loved about it. It's pretty sturdy for the most part. And it's super clean, super clean install. I am actually I'm not. I thought about taking a zip tie to that, but I don't want it to be on the transducer. Went up through the scupper hole there, and yeah, I'll see you guys back up on top. All right, so now we've made it back up on top. We're about to get ready to stick the transducer cable back into the hole and um, start getting that fed through, and I'm gonna show you what I use. I like to use a metal hanger. We'll get that all on video and show you guys. Let me get this down for you guys so you can see. Uh, we got all the wiring, oh, and it comes with a ton, a ton of wiring. Just take a piece, and when I when I um, whenever I put the transducer cable, I like to take your motor bracket off. To me, it makes it so much easier to not have to work around that thing. I'm just gonna slide all of this cable. 
through the hole. Alright, now that we got it through the hole, we can go ahead and put our fittings back on, which critical step I just missed. Glad you guys get to see this part. Forgot to put the uh, the part on that holds your wiring. So let's try this again. Feed our wiring through. Get this hanger out of the way. Garmin gives a ton of transducer wiring. I'm switching over from Hummingbird, and I'm pretty sure that this has like 10 more foot of transducer cable. I guess they want to make sure you can get it on any size boat that you need. Alright, so there's that. Now we are going to need the little supplied foam piece that Old Town supplies. Stick that on your wiring. pushed into the hole. I may try to use a new port. This one's kind of worn. Like so. Well, oh, hold on. This gasket is, uh, this gasket's messing up on me. Alright. Go ahead and well, we need the cap. Then you're gonna need your cap. Go ahead and put it on. Get that mounted like so. Take your screws. I'm gonna put her back together. And it is hot here in Texas, guys. Extremely hot. all tightened down and then we'll put our motor bracket back on just like so and then we take our motor bracket put it back on Secured. Snug them until you kind of get all of your bolts in. That's what I like to do. task is fairly simple I mean when you only need two tools to complete something it's a pretty easy job Get that kind of moved around make sure they're tight that you're done your transducer wires mounted your motor brackets back on let me get you guys brought back up here and then what I like to do is take your transducer cable just roll it up this is where your zip ties are gonna come in handy just make sure and leave yourself enough slack to be able to get back through your gunnel when you come out the other side to go to your graph. Just wrap it up here. And we'll leave. 
uh, we'll probably leave three wraps off. We'll leave quite a bit. Three or four foot. Uh, let me see here. We'll leave about, I would say leave about five foot loose before you wrap, before you zip tie. That way, just in case, that way you know you have plenty to um, make it all the way back through your hole, up into your, up through your gunnel and all the way to your graph. Or wherever you're mounting it. I'm mounting this one on a track. Some of you guys may be using the a kayak handle or something like that. So my zip tie is almost a little short. I just had to improvise there. Sometimes you gotta use your third hand. There we go. Zip tight just like that. Nice and neat. Stuff it back in the hole. Just like so. And then let me get the camera moved and we will uh, be right back with you. Alright, so for the next step, you're going to need just a metal clothes hanger. That's what I use. Some of you guys may want to use that plumber's tape. That's what it's called. I think that's what it's called. And I just bring it out the front hatch here. And then I will take some electrical tape. This tape's pretty warm. Take some electrical tape. Go a couple rounds. Just enough to hold it. Take your hanger. Well, back that back up. The electric tape kind of got crossed on us. Let me take this actual plug so that way it'll stay straight. Take that back off. There we go. You can feed it back through your gunnel here, just like that. Easy as that. Take your tape off. Keep your hanger, don't throw it away. Metal hangers are kind of hard to come by, or at least I've found in my experience anyway. So I always keep the hanger. That's like one of the most essential kayak rigging tools I've found. Take all our tape back off of it. Pull your slack. So now we have enough slack. Now, we will start. This is the wiring, power wire for my hummingbird. So now we're gonna already have wiring pre-ran to the back where my batteries go. So now we will, the reason I left it on here is so that way I know what's positive and what's negative. That way when we go with the new wiring, it's simple. No guessing. Take your wire cutters, snip it. Strip it. I always like to twist the wire. And we will take a butt splice. Let me see here. And these are heat shrink butt splices as well. I really like to use those. It's just the little red ones. Go ahead and take it. In, crimp it, always check, make sure it's tight, and then we'll have to leave that 
So what also can do, because we're gonna have to put our fitting back on to differentiate from positive and negative is I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink this end. That way I know this end is positive. Just like that. Because we're gonna have to cut the other wiring. And since your transducer wiring is here, keep your wiring from falling back down in your hole. That's if you already have pre-wiring done. Just zip tie it, that way you don't have to worry about it falling back down in there. Just like that. Go ahead and snip our ground. In my case, we have to take off the fitting. Now, go ahead and take that, take the power wire here, and I just realized one problem. Let's see here. Yes, that's an issue. Okay. So luckily, in my case, I already have a fuse, so we're going to have to cut this one off. To be able to fit it well this wouldn't even go through the hole well it would if you cut these two tabs off you might could even squeeze it down through there but we're gonna have to cut this fuse off luckily i already have a fuse though because it's not going to go through your actual fitting that all your wiring goes through so we're gonna have to snip that let's move some of this wiring here Let's go ahead and get our fitting on before I go any further. There you go. Don't forget though, you also need to put your transducer fitting through, Ooh, which that's going to be an issue. Hmm, that's a problem. Okay, so let's try to put that through there first. And then we'll squeeze the wiring through here somehow. Get our gasket on. That way everything remains waterproof. And then look at there. Okay, so now that all that's on, let's lay the wiring up there and then strip our positive. Go ahead and get that connected. That way we don't lose track of what's positive and what's negative on our battery terminal back there. Take your pliers, crimp, always check your connection, then we'll go ahead and heat shrink this one. Hopefully the background noise isn't too bad. Like I said, we're on the road, so I wanted to do this on the road to show you guys that it can be done no matter where you are. You don't need a shop. You don't need a lot of fancy tools. We're literally using a Phillips screwdriver and a pair of wire crimpers. Easy as that. Strip that one. Twist it. Go ahead and get our butt splice on this one. This is going to be our ground here. Go ahead and heat shrink this. I'm just using a lighter. I don't, I don't have a uh, heat gun with me. Like I said, I wanted to make sure that 
you guys see that this process is not near as hard or intimidating as it seems to be. It's pretty simple. Using the actual graph is the hardest part. Make sure your wiring's in there. Crimp it. Just like that. Heat shrink that side. And there we go. Now all of your wiring is waterproof. These, uh, the blue and the brown wire is for NEMA. We're not gonna be running that on this boat. So they're just communication wires. And all I did was take um, a little, I don't know exactly what those are called, but they're caps, they're like a wire cap that you crimp on. Cut our zip tie off. And we will feed this wiring back down into the boat. the birds and everything else are going to start chirping. It's just my luck. Get everything going. Here. Okay. Well, so that's a little issue that I ran into just now. But what I'm going to do, I have this gasket on the wrong side, I'm going to very easily, without ripping it, just put it on the other side. There we go. Can I get it lined up? Just like so. Then we'll get our foam piece. Actually, we need to check our wiring. So, I'm going to go ahead and just test fit this stuff. Just to kind of check our length real quick. So, let me do that. Let me just push this in real quick. Just like that. Yeah, so see, we have way too much wiring. Just keep pushing that wire into your hole. So however, however much you think is enough. What I like to do, I actually tape mine and I actually squeeze it inside of this track to where it's nice and neat. Pull this out, move it around. There we go. And then I like to run it, similar to that. We're already going to need a little more power wire. I'll leave a little bit of slack, but not much. So just like that. Leave a little bit of slack. Alright, now we'll put our foam piece in. Which this transducer wire is a lot bigger than the um, hummingbird. So. It's a... Uh, Gonna be a little bit, a little bit different. All in all, though, it's went together very well, in my opinion. Very easy. Take our cap. And you know what? I'm gonna turn this. Take it and turn it. Just because I want it to come out on the same side. That way it's nice and neat once we put our cap on. Let's see here. Just like. Okay. So.
to come out. I need to twist them to the front. That way when we push our cap on, the wiring comes out smooth just like this at a, a port that's side by side. To your screws. Put those back on. There we go, your wiring is done. And then if you always need a little bit, it's pretty simple just to pull a little bit of slack. That little um, foam grommet they have is kind of lenient. Next step will be getting this slid into the track. Be back with you guys in a minute. All right, once you get all that done, you're gonna need to put your screw part onto your transducer cable which all it does is simply snaps together just like that and then they have a supplied little o-ring that we're gonna slide on here slot that on kind of get it pushed down just like that and you can take it Get it put into the back of your graph here. Oh, if I can find the hole, there we go. And that will allow you to screw your transducer cable on. Then you can take the power cable, get it put on, just like so. And so I thought on my old graphs, I would tape these wires, and kind of slide them in there but since this transducer wire is a little bit thicker, actually that's the power cable, excuse me. What I found that we can do, just to give you a nice neat appearance, still give you some, like I said, you can pull a little slack right here, much as you would like. That way here you have plenty of room to move it you know back and forth which that you should never have to move it closer forward but if you do you can just pull it and then what I've come up with now we'll see how well it works how long it will stay just push that into that track it almost fits perfectly it's not crimping the wiring or nothing like that don't know how long that's going to actually stay. Um, you know what? I don't really like that. You get just a little more slack here on the transducer cable. Push it back in. Just like so. I'm sorry, guys. I'm profusely sweating. It is very hot. We'll see if we can get that to stay in there. Just gives you a nice little neat appearance. And what I'm gonna do to maybe help that power wire stay in there, I'm gonna take one of these little zip ties here. I'm just gonna zip tie it. Go ahead and snip that. And there we go. Hopefully it'll stay in there, but it just keeps your wires all nice and neat. Out of every, out of the way, I see one little pull and it'll kind of come out of there, but that's okay. So that sums it up. We are about to take it, uh, we're about to go get the battery. We're going to power this thing up. We'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, we got our battery. I have quick disconnects on mine. I keep mine in the hole here. Go ahead and snap that together. That way we can get power. And what I have down there, this is a lure lock pad. 
you can buy them and you can stick that battery oh sorry stick that battery on there and it sticks it put your wiring in there put your cover on let's power this sucker up let's see what we got gonna have to adjust it we also mounted this with a yak attack um, fish finder mount I'll leave the description to that or the link to that in the description as well sorry let's see if we got some juice there she is it's awesome I can't wait to get this out on the water that's gonna be the next video is a on the water look at it we're gonna look at the imaging see how clear it is side scan down scan this is also um, panoptics ready so eventually maybe in the future we'll run panoptics on this thing but so far first impressions let's click agree is this thing is nice this thing already comes preloaded with your charts I believe they are navionics so you have fishing chart navigation chart perspective 3d let's look at our fishing charts look at this this is awesome so responsive look how responsive this screen is wow gives you even it gives you emergent vegetation look at that shallow hazards the mapping on this thing is it's pretty incredible coming from my hummingbird anyway which I know I could have bought maps but I didn't have those I didn't have a map card on my hummingbird so this coming already preloaded that's uh that's intense so let's just go home here and then there's all your traditional your clear view which is down scan side scan and then your combos of course now an actual setup and use video will probably film a little bit later but I just wanted to give you guys a look a first look after we've installed it power and everything on the kayak and this thing is incredible so far I can't wait to use it hopefully this week we'll be on the water with it it even can connect to your phone that's incredible as well you can do text messaging it'll pop up text messages etc so this is gonna be fun but yeah guys that's pretty much it we will give you a new video on how to use it coming up pretty soon it's it's not too big the yak attack mount as well which it's their lock and load let me show you that it's just their lock and load system i love their lock and load system you can so you can just click this and that's how you can pull the whole thing off super fast or if you need to move it you just push it and you can spin this thing any way you want 360 and it won't come off let it sit back down and it locks and that's how we mounted it so yeah guys, that was the install of the Garmin 93SV UHD on an Old Town 136 autopilot. It's super hot. I mean, it is insanely hot. It's more humid than anything here in Texas today. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like it, you know, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.